Hello and welcome to the third session of the four-part IRS Rail Webinar series on the power of digital to inspire rail passenger confidence, produced by the International Railway Summit in association with SPB, the, the Swiss Federal Railways. Today we are going to explore managing passenger flow in stations post-lockdown, courtesy of our sponsor, Viovo. I'm Jules Somura, the Managing Director of IRS Events. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this session. Uh, so at the last count, we had over 200 people from 42 countries registered for today. Welcome to those of you attending our webinar for the first time, and welcome back if you've joined us before. We are in regular contact with leading rail operators and infrastructure owners from across the world. And without exception, they're all suffering from the impact of the lockdown. Among those operators, I'm grateful that SBB, one of the most innovative rail operators in the world, has kindly agreed to support and lead a debate on probably the most crucial issue for the rail, se rail sector today, regaining passenger confidence. We've been exploring uh, the power of digital to inspire rail passenger confidence once a month between September and December. The pandemic is accelerating innovation in many areas, and together with SBB, we have selected four key areas of innovation. In September, we learned about how operators are providing a healthy environment for passengers using digital technology. We heard from the International Union of Railways, UIC, SBB, East Japan Railway, JI East, Advantech, and Alstom. And in October, we debated how we can digitally nudge passengers for social distancing with the help of SBB and Paris Transport, RATP, as well as the technical and strategy, strategy experts, Passengera, Smart Motors, and PwC. If you missed the last sessions, last two sessions, the videos are available on our website, so do check them out. We'll be announcing the details of part four at the end of this webinar. Today, we'll be discussing managing passenger flow in stations post lockdown. When we planned this topic in the summer, uh, things were looking a little bit better, uh, but we now find ourselves in the second or the third wave of the virus in many countries. Um, and that makes uh, this topic even more relevant today. Uh, once again, I'm delighted to have the support of leading opinion makers and innovators as speakers with us today. In particular, we are fortunate to have the support of Viovo, which allows us to provide this important debate for anyone to watch for free. Viovo is a leading expert in transport passenger flow management. Uh, many of the world's key airports and now also a growing number of train stations rely on Viovo to monitor, analyze and predict passenger flow. Before COVID, their solutions were already vital in providing better passenger experience, minimizing delays, easing pressure at peak times and increasing retail revenue. But during the current crisis, you can imagine how crucial their solutions are to maintain uh, maintaining social distancing, avoiding bottlenecks, etc. So um, I look forward to learning about Viovo's uh, data-driven and AI-powered approach from their general manager, Peter Knutsen, shortly. We are equally grateful to SBB's Jasmine Turau, Keolis Lyon's Jérôme Bertoneau, and USC's Christian Chabanel uh, for the, sharing their expertise with us today. If you want to know how, how you can support future webinars and participate in the debate, uh, do get in touch with us. Uh, we're tweeting live during this webinar, so follow us at, at Rail Summit, and please use the hashtag um, IRS Rail Webinars. Uh, if you enjoy the session, do continue the debate um, uh, uh, after uh, the, the webinar on um, uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. And uh, I just want to check that uh, we have all the um, uh, speakers and Christian mm -hmm. available. Christian, are you there? Um, Christian was had a little bit of a technical issue uh, uh, this afternoon. Um, so while we um, wait for Christian to join, and at that stage I'll introduce him um, uh, properly, um, may I suggest that we perhaps we start with uh, um, Jasmine um, uh, from SBB, um, Head of Crowd Management Competence Centre, um, uh, to start this uh, uh, presentation uh, uh, today. And before we start uh, with Jasmine, we have one uh, audience poll. So um, let's uh, let's go directly to the poll, um, and then we can start with Jasmine's uh, session. So if uh, um, if we could show the poll, please. Uh, 
Um, I don't know if you can show up, Paul. Um, yes, thank you. So how important has data analysis been in supporting your company's response to COVID-19? So we have four options to choose, to choose from. We have used data ex extensively for decision-making. We have made some use of data. We have, uh, we have data, but have not used it effectively, or we don't have any relevant data for decision-making. So if you could select uh, uh, one of these options, so this applies um, uh, whatever sector you work in, whether you're in passenger uh, transport or, or anything else, um, um, it will still re be relevant to, to your company situation. How important has data analysis been in supporting your company's response to COVID-19? Um, so if you can uh, um, respond uh, in the next uh, maybe 10 seconds or so um, and uh, then I will hand over to Jasmine uh, very shortly. So most of you have responded. Um, if you can respond in the next three seconds, uh, whoever hasn't uh, uh, responded yet, um, and then we'll close that now. Um, okay, so if you can close the poll, please. Yes, thank you. So the audience can um, see the result of the poll um, in the poll section next to the chat screen um, and the closed section. So you can see the result there. Um, it's the, the largest number, 42% um, have said we've used data extensively and followed by we have made some use of data, so 35%. So between them, 77% uh, have made some, some sort of uh, uh, made use of data in some way. Um, before I hand over to Jasmine, I just wanted to also um, uh, let the audience know that you, have, uh, you can ask questions in two different ways. Um, either you can ask uh, in, in, in writing, so Q&A uh, section next to the chat screen. Um, you can type your questions and uh, um, uh, all the audience members can vote uh, which questions should be asked and uh, Christian will be picking up uh, those questions. Um, you can also raise hand. Um, so at the bottom of the chat screen, there's a, it's, it's a little bit difficult to see, but there's a hand icon. Uh, you can uh, click on that if you like to ask uh, uh, directly um, uh, using your mic. Um, then one of our colleagues will get, get in touch with you to, to sit on your mic. And when you're ready um, during the panel discussion, um, Christian will nominate you so you can ask that question directly as well. Um, so um, without further ado, um, let's uh, um, ask Jasmine to, to join the floor and uh, um, ask for her, her presentation. So all yours, Jasmine. Thanks, Jules, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everybody, to my presentation. Um, thanks also for participating in the poll. Um, I will come to be, uh, back to it uh, in a few seconds. But first, um, I want to quickly introduce crowd management at SBB. Um, crowd management at SBB is meaning safety and passenger flows in railway stations. So I'm responsible for these topics uh, in all of our railway stations, which are 750 stations. The title of my presentation, as you already see, is Value of Passenger Frequency Data During the COVID-19 Pandemic. And you already answered uh, the poll. And as we can see, for all of us, data is really important during this crisis. But I would say it's also important in normal times, let's say. OK, let's start with my presentation. I want to begin with the data we have. So we have data available in 26 stations all over Switzerland, as you can see on this map. Um, the stations are the, those with the highest passenger frequencies. And we collect this data since more than five years. So we really have the possibility to um, analyze developments here. Now, from this data we collect, which is the numbers of persons which enter and exit the stations per minute, we can calculate the number of persons being in a station. And 
when comparing these numbers of persons to the um, numbers we counted last year, we can calculate this curve you can see. Um, so in this graph, um, the effect of COVID-19 for SBB is shown. Um, you can see that with the lockdown in March and a train time timetable reduction we had in Switzerland, the passenger frequencies were down to nearly 20% uh, in comparison to frequencies last year. Um, with the re-establishment of the train timetable in summer, um, the passengers, passenger frequencies already grew back to 80%, which is really a lot. And as we know from other countries, that's quite high numbers uh, we had here. Um, with the second home office recommendation only some weeks ago, um, frequencies um, are now at, let, let's say, 60%, but still we have quite high frequencies in comparison to other countries, but still, of course, that has a big effect on, um, yeah, on SBB. With the data I showed you, so the passenger frequencies um, for the stations, um, we can also calculate or do predictions of how many people will use the station, um, yeah, let's say in the next week. And this data is really valuable for our customers because nowadays you don't want to use the station when it's, when it's really full. And um, now, as we show the um, passenger frequencies for the, for the next uh, week, as shown on this slide, um, our passengers, our customers um, can check on our website whether the station will be full or not, and they can choose a time when they want to enter the station or not. Um, this this um, data we, we show to other custom, our customers is not only interesting nowadays, but I think it will be a big use for our customers also in the future, because um, yeah, it helps you to understand um, when, uh, for example, there is a good time to do some shopping in the station. You don't need to do that uh, during peak hours, I would say. So now, what's uh, the results or what do we learn from COVID-19 for our station planning? First of all, I have to say, for long-term planning, we don't change how we plan the stations. Um, if we build a new station, it's planned for more than 50 years and forecasts are always uncertain. So, um, yeah, there's from our, at least from our point of view, there's no need to change how we do our long term planning, meaning station capacity planning for long term. Um, so the, yeah, the methods we already have and which are really established are not going to change because of this crisis. But um, of course, for short-term planning, COVID-19 had a big impact at, uh, for SBB. So um, for example, um, dispensers for, for disinfection uh, had to be placed in the railway stations, or we had to figure out how to do queuing in our stations that needs extra space. And Fortunately, our stations are planned um, for flexible use of space and areas. So, um, for example, um, certain areas were used for retail um, the last years, and now we are going to use or we are using it for, um, yeah, for, for queuing for other uh, shops or for disinfection uh, dispenders. So, um, we are really um, trying to, to be flexible and to react on what we, um, yeah, uh, react on the situation in our stations. So um, some um, possibilities or um, the ways how we can react on, on these situations in our stations are shown on the slide uh, on the right. 
So um, we have the possibility to inform, to nudge, to guide and to control. Let me quickly explain what that means for us. So information is just giving our customers the information um, how uh, crowded they will experience the station and they can make that choice whether they want to enter it or not. Nudging is influencing passengers' behavior without them realizing. So, um, for example, we are using uh, benches um, to um, spread people over the platform. Um, then we can guide our passengers. That's um, really showing them with signalization um, where they should walk. And for example, we reopened a passenger tunnel um, for better passenger flows. And this is signalized by arrows as shown on the really small picture. Um, and the last thing we could do, but uh, fortunately we don't need to do that right now, we could control passenger flows with personnel. Um, we would only do that when we have safety issues, but fortunately we don't have that right now. So let me conclude with this, at least from my point of view, really beautiful picture of the station of Bern. Um, for SBB, of course, uh, COVID-19 had a big influence um, on passenger flows. Due to the data we have available, we were able to show our management figures and statistics, um, and uh, they were able to react on that and uh, replan, for example, timetables or um, yeah, opening times of shops and so on. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jasmine. Um, we have uh, um, Christian on the line. Um, we, we, we're connecting through the phone. Um, so I hope it works. Um, uh, um, uh, Christian, can you, can you hear me? Yes, um, just me. Can, you can hear Christian, yes? Yes. yes. Oh, per perfect. Okay. So let's. Uh, um, uh, hopefully, this will work, um, and let's let's hope it will work. So thank thank you very much, Jasmine, and uh, um, I'm just going to um, uh, introduce uh, Christian um, uh, uh, to the audience, and uh, we'll come back to to you, Jasmine, uh, after uh, the discussion with uh, with Jerome shortly. So thank you. Um, so um, the, um, so let me just quickly introduce uh, you to uh, Christian Chavanel. Christian is the director of uh, rail system at the International Union of Railways UIC, uh, which means he's responsible for all the technical work at UIC, the global association of uh, uh, some 200 rail operators. Um, some of you may remember uh, Christian from uh, our eighth summit in New Delhi exactly one year ago today. Um, where he chaired the conference program for us very skillfully. Um, so hopefully um, this uh, um, uh, audio kind of uh, um, uh, transmission through uh, mobile is, is going to work and uh, welcome you, welcome back uh, on, on to our program, Christian. Um, before Christian joined USC last year, he had worked for SNCF for over 30 years in many areas, including operations, safety, standards, regulatory affairs, and international development. Uh, most importantly for today's webinar, he was the head of uh, Gare de Lyon in Paris between 2002 and 2005, uh, looking after the third busiest station in France with 32 platforms, 1,100 employees and 320 TGV trains departing the station every four minutes at peak times, um, as well as the retail facilities with the highest revenue in French stations at the time. So uh, um, that makes him a perfect moderator for today's debate. Um, uh, technology permitting uh, uh, on, uh, on managing passenger flow in stations post lockdown. So, Christian, uh, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jules. And uh, sorry for the technical problem. Uh, can, can everybody uh, hear me? Um, I can I can hear you, Christian. But if the audience members can just uh, message on the chat screen to say um, if you can hear Christian. Um, so, uh, 
I tried to pre uh, I, I, I present the, the UIC COVID-19 task force now. Uh, so it, it's uh, uh, um, I, I, I talk on behalf of my colleague Marc Bigon. Marc Bigon is a director of UIC passenger department and he is also coordinator of UIC COVID-19 task force. And so next slide, please. Um, at the very beginning, so next time. Yes, thank you. At the very beginning of the, of the COVID, uh, UIT decided to create a task force, and we had uh, 71 UIT members and 18 international organizations around the table, and it was possible for, for, for UIC to publish five UIC guidance documents and two state of the art papers. So you have the link. Uh, if you want to, to, to download uh, the documents, it's possible, and, and it will be possible for you to download the, the, the current presentation. Um, today, you know, the agency, European Railway Era, the agency, uh, is allowed to use uh, UIT materials, and, and when you, you have information from uh, the agency concerning COVID-19, most of the time, um, uh, materials uh, comes from uh, UIC. Next slide, please. So you 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 have the, the, the map of the different uh, uh, stakeholders uh, involved in the uh, UIC task force with from 49 different countries. So if you click the next slide, you can see the different. Um, guidance uh, first a series of potential measures because in March it was uh, very important for every railway undertaking uh, and every railway uh, companies to, to, to share best practices and it was difficult uh, for, for if you remember it was difficult to convince governments that uh, traveling inside the train was safe and so uh, that's the reason why in April we, we, we published a, a new document potential measures to restore confidence and after um, um, uh, uh, another document concerning uh, how to, to manage the sector during the lockdown and uh, after uh, we, in July uh, we carried out the study for a first estimation of the economic impact of COVID-19 on the railway sector. Um, if you Look at the next slide. Uh, you can see, for instance, one of the uh, of the practice. Uh, yes, uh, you can see that uh, wearing a mask is not mandatory everywhere. It could be uh, optional in some countries, or it could depend on the regional authorities. Um, a quick glance for the next slide is a quick glance at the economic. Um, impact uh, on the railway sector you have for passenger and freight both the estimation of the rail use it was uh, before the second wave of, of covid uh, all around europe so uh, the estimations will have to be updated but you can see that uh, we expected in 2021 uh, the beginning of the recovery but it's not possible to 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 go to the situation before COVID. And it was the reviews for both freight and passenger. And after you have the different, for the next slide, we have, you, you have the passenger reviews. It's exactly the same problems. And after the next slide, we have uh, for, the, for the freight, uh, exactly the same problem. And uh, in Europe, in Asia, in the rest of the world, you have the same. But it was very important for our members in order to convince their home governments to obtain a subsidies. Um, now uh, we prepare the after. So the new normal for race. So the next slide, please. And the objective is to explore the mid-term and long-term prospects for the railway sector, to analyze uh, what could be the new normal in rail transport, and to uh, provide recommendations for the rail community and public authorities to maintain or boost rail traffic. And don't forget that uh, we have the context of the Europe year of rail next year, and we would like to obtain. Um, 
more help for the sector because it is uh, more efficient uh, concerning uh, the CO2 emissions. So the scope will uh, be for passengers, freight, infrastructure managers, and it will be for uh, the five continents. So thank you very much for, for, for that. And now, Jules, um, I give you the floor. Thank you, um, Christian, and uh, thank you to the audience members for uh, giving response as well. Um, and apologies for the uh, um, technical issues, uh, something to do with the platform that we're using. But uh, um, hof um, hopefully this will uh, work and uh, we, can, uh, we can continue uh, this way. Um, so thank you, Christian, for the uh, 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 information about uh, um, uh, UIC's activities. Um, so now, um, if we can, uh, we have another poll um uh, coming up um so if we can show the poll please before we um uh, go on to the this uh, uh, presentation from Keolis. thank you um so in the past month actually we have two very quick polls so if we could answer very quickly to, to both questions in the past month have you used public transport for any of the following purposes so you can choose all of the uh, options that uh, apply uh, so work university or school uh, shopping hobby health administrative so I, I guess it means uh, going to city hall and things like that um, I have not used public transport in the last month um, or uh, any other purpose uh, I, I, uh, if you've used a public transport so if you could uh, answer this question um, very quickly, um, and I'll, we'll, we'll go on to the second question uh, um, uh, uh, very, very soon. Um, so again, if you could go to the polls um, uh, section, um, it will show the results soon. Um, okay, so we have uh, um, almost uh, uh, everyone responded. If you can make the final uh, responses uh, uh, in the next three seconds, and I will move on to the next uh, um, next question. Um, so, if you can close this, uh, um, please, and we'll, we'll, we'll open the next one. Um, very similar question, but instead of in the last month, uh, we're talking about in the next month. So, between now and uh, now and Christmas, I guess, in the next month, do you plan to use public transport for any of the following purposes? So, same same set of answers. Um, uh, if you could uh, respond to, to this uh, um, this question, um, and uh, uh, it would be interesting to compare the two um, uh, uh, responses. To, to uh, um, so, if you could um, respond uh, in the next uh, few seconds, and, and Christian, if you like to uh, perhaps introduce Jerome in the meantime. I hope it's uh, working. Um, so hopefully um, we'll uh, we'll come back to Christian in a minute. Um, but we we have uh, uh, with us uh, Deputy CEO of Keolis Lyon. So um, Keolis, as as as, as you you uh, know, is uh, one of the biggest uh, public transport operators uh, working globally. Um, uh, headquartered in France, uh, working globally, and uh, Lyon is one of their biggest uh, networks um, uh, of operations. So Jerome. Um, uh, represents Keolis Leon as their deputy CEO. Um, so the floor is. Uh, so let, let us let us close the poll first. Um, so if you can close the poll, please, um, and we can see under the poll section of the um, of your screen um, both of the responses. So the in the past month, um, so between mid October and now, um, thirty eight percent have not used public transport, and um, so 24% used for, for work and 16% used for hobby. So this is uh, uh, any kind of uh, um, uh, leisure purposes, I guess, uh, going to theatre, or maybe are not theatres, I don't know, um, or restaurants, etc. cetera. Um, in, in the next um, month, um, so I guess similar number, 39% uh, do not plan to use public transport. Um, so I think the result is is quite similar. Um, uh, Twenty eight percent, a uh, little bit more for work, a um, little bit less for hobby. Twelve percent. Um, so, um, Jerome, what do you think about the result? 
Okay, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for answering th this question. It's a uh, it's quite uh, you have two ways to to see it. Uh, you, you, we we could be uh, a little depressed to see on uh, that uh, almost forty percent of uh, of you uh, wouldn't use uh, public transport, but in this situation, it's not uh, very surprising. What which was what is a uh, a quite uh, interesting uh, thing is that is it's stable uh, that uh, we will have uh, more people not using uh, public transport. So it's uh, good news. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, just to to figure that uh, these questions are very important to us, uh, as you you'll see uh, in uh, my, my presentation uh, to. Uh, 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 to think of what we uh, have to do, well, how we have to adapt to the situation, and that's a very important thing to, to for us to uh, keep uh, keep the touch with our customers and uh, ask them uh, such uh, questions. So uh, I will begin if you want my my presentation. The object is just to give you a quick glance on uh, what we did in uh, uh, the Lyon Urban Network uh, uh, in last May. Uh, we, we, we are speaking of the first lockdown, uh, no, not the, the one we we are uh, um, in in it uh, nowadays. So uh, in uh, in last May, an example of what we did in Lyon, it's not a pretension of being a reference. It's just an example of what we're working we can do in uh, a urban network. Just to, to see for those who don't know where Lyon is, uh, it's the second largest um, urban network in France after Paris. And uh, uh, it's a multimodal network, but here we're uh, speaking mostly of uh, the metro network, which is uh, four lines, 46 stations, and uh, 800,000 uh, passengers per day. Obviously, it uh, figures before COVID. So what we did uh, after lockdown, our strategy was uh, uh, basically in two uh, uh, two objectives. Uh, the first was to minimize the time the time spent by our uh, passenger in the stations, and the second was to help the passenger to keep their distance. So first one. Minimize time spent in uh, stations with the main idea was to uh, predict and monitor the passenger numbers and then adapt the trend frequency to this uh, passenger numbers. Uh, so predict and monitor. Why predict? Uh, because in such situation as COVID, uh, when you open, you reopen more uh, largely your uh, network uh, to uh, passenger coming back to you after a lockdown, it's very important to be successful right until day one, because it's when you uh, give back the confidence of your customer in your network. So uh, it's important to be uh, ready on day one and so to predict how many passengers you will have. So how would you do that? As you see, we uh, know the structure of uh, the um, of our uh, customer, uh, the categories: how many go to school, how many go to uh, study, to work, how many go shopping. That's the, just the equation you answered. Then, during lockdown, we did some surveys and asked them, asked our customer, what they would do after lockdown. What would they be uh, their use of uh, our pub, uh, public transport network. And by combination of these two uh, information, you can predict category by category who will remain, who will back in the network and how many passengers. And the global was uh, an estimation, a prediction of 30 to 35% of passenger back. And it was quite accurate because on day one we had uh, like 31% of passengers. And then after prediction, you monitor, you, you uh, every day monitor the real uh, passenger numbers and uh, with uh, you do it with uh, some uh, 
data, uh, and for instance, this one very important, uh, as uh, similar as uh, what Jasmine just showed us before, is the uh, number of uh, passenger entering and leaving our stations. On the left, you you got um, a schematic. Uh, map of uh, the four lines of metro in Lyon and for each station the little uh, blue and red figures are uh, in real time the number of passengers getting in, get in and out the station so you follow it in real time and you also can have it on a one day view so the, the chart you have on the right um, and uh, as you you see uh, the orange curve is uh, for one day, the number of passengers every quarter of hour. Uh, that was uh, May last last year, so quite normal year. And the dark curve is uh, one day of uh, May uh, this year, just after, after the lockdown. And you can have it to, for the whole network, uh, but also for every station. Uh, every line as you want and with that you will uh, this information you will adapt the train frequency to this uh, passenger numbers but you won't adapt it just strictly in the level needed by your passenger numbers you will adapt it at a much higher level because what we wanted to do is uh, wants to uh, um, so that our passenger wouldn't wait on our platforms, wouldn't create crowds on our platforms. Uh, so uh, we we put much higher frequencies and strictly needed so that they could easily uh, take the first train coming in the station. And as you see, uh, just after the lockdown. At the end of lockdown in France was the uh, uh, 11th of May, and you see we had a 30% frequentation, but a 85 train frequency, so much higher than the 30% strictly needed to uh, help people to uh, not wait on the platforms. So that's what the first part of what we did: use data to uh, adapt our uh, service that was the quite digital part but we also had uh, uh, more physical action and uh, by uh, mainly uh, adapting our stations uh, with the objective of helping the passenger to keep their distance it's not to guarantee that they would uh, respect the safe distance of one meter that we cannot guarantee but we want to help them to keep the maximum distance how we do that uh, quite uh, uh, we do that by uh, for instance as you see indicating them uh, how to uh, uh, cross each other uh, safely in the stairs in the corridors uh, we uh, uh, made uh, we indicated uh, some uh, waiting zones on the platforms uh, so an amount of, of uh, indication and floor marking uh, to to guide them to to, to help them and uh, most important the uh, our philosophy our strategy was uh, to first remind them everywhere the message the objective of keep the maximum distance. So that's what you see, for instance, on the doors of this train in French. Sorry, merci de garder la distance. I mean, uh, thank you to keep your, your distance. So you remind the objective, you share the objective, and then you give to the passenger the, the, as much space as possible. That means as much space as as possible, that means we did not shut any entrance of our stations. We didn't shut any area in the station. We didn't condemn any equipments. All remained available because 
when you want people to keep the distance, you don't want to waste some space. That would be highly counterproductive. Just one example, and I finish with that to illustrate that. This, uh, with the famous uh, one seat out of two, uh, which is, uh, as you know, the commonly uh, safe distance when you sit down is to keep uh, one free seat between uh, two people. You can uh, do it, as you see in this picture, by physically condemning one seat out of two. For instance, with plastic ribbon or, or what you want. And you see it on the, on the picture. And what you see, it's a real a situation of uh, eight, um, eight seats in a row in our, one of our stations. And you see that this family of four people, they are occupying the whole space, the whole row of seats. And the second way of doing it is what the philosophy we adopted in, in Lyon uh, is to, uh, again, to remind, to share the objective, keep the maximum distance. But you let the people, you let the whole space available and you let the people adapt, uh, find themselves the, the, the good uh, solution. And that's what we see on picture two. All seats are, are available, and you see the same family of four. They live together, they are together, so uh, they can sit side by side. And they're occupying only the half of the room. And you see that the let space for two other people sitting down safely in the same row. It's just an illustration, an example of the philosophy we adopted, which was, again, to share the objective with our uh, customer and let them, letting them think by themselves and finding the adapted situation, solution of uh, to face the situation. And uh, often we, we saw that it's uh, more efficient than wanting to uh, apply a standard solution in every situation. Thank you. Okay, Jules or Christian. Um, thank you, Jerome, um, uh, for your presentation. Um, uh, uh, Christian has uh, um, been um, following your presentation until um, about one minute ago, and, and then um, he, he cannot see <laughs> the screen, unfortunately, and 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 here. So I, I propose, um, if I could, uh, um, um, if we could uh, bring uh, 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 Jasmine on the um, on on stage for a few more minutes together with Jerome. I I, I suggest. Uh, uh, thank you, Jasmine. I suggest we we talk. Uh, um, uh, we ask about uh, two or three of the questions posed by the audience. Um, if, if the, the two of you could, could answer those questions and then uh, hopefully um, Christian will come back uh, for the panel discussion at the end. Um, so if you could uh, uh, all kind of refer to the Q&A section and the published, uh, there are a few, uh, quite a few questions coming, coming in. So maybe we'll cover some of the more popular uh, questions there. So Paul has asked, um, post-COVID-19 distancing behavior could continue. Um, um, passenger, passengers may wish to keep separate uh, 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 from each other, even if they, um, there's vaccine. Uh, when demand is back at 100%, how can this be dealt with in stations and with timetabling? So how how can um, um, uh, you know how can we reassure passengers effectively, uh, even even if it's uh, if it's deemed 100% safe, uh, passengers will still be. Um, um, uh, skeptical, uh, I guess. Uh, how, how can we deal with that in stations and uh, and, and timetable? Maybe we can start with Jasmine. Yeah, sure. Um, so first, uh, let me say um, we experience at least in our stations that passengers already uh, tried to keep distance before COVID nineteen. So um, when we um, look at our data and um, look at how people spread over the platform. 
um, they always try to keep, keep distance to the neighbors on the platform, the waiting neighbors on the platform. Um, so our um, stations are already planned um, for being able to keep distance. But of course, um, we also experience that um, the, yeah, let's say rear part of the station uh, of the platforms is always less crowded uh, than the rest of the station. And now coming back to the question, how can we, um, yeah, um, make sure that people can keep the distance also with 100% of passenger frequencies? Well, <laughs> with the same, uh, area available, we cannot do that, of course. Um, so yeah, um, stations are sometimes quite crowded, but, um, and Jerome already said that in his presentation um, as well, we can try to spread people better. We can try to direct flows. We can uh, try to use, uh, make people use the whole platform, um, but that's always our aim and we are already planning stations like that. So we hope um, people are, able to do so in Switzerland. Thank you, Jasmine. And how about you, Jerome? I know, you know, um, uh, Jasmine's covered uh, quite a lot of things there. Um, from your point of view, how can we um, uh, keep uh, sort of distance uh, even when, when the demand is back? Yeah, what we what we saw is is uh, that it, it, it's a real demand of our, uh, we, when we make surveys for the future, we see that it's now more important Perhaps than uh, it was in the past, and people want to be to, to feel more more safe. So, fortunately or, or not, but uh, at the moment, fortunately, we, we had uh, like uh, eighty five percent of uh, frequentation uh, uh, between the two uh, uh, lockdowns. So, mm -hmm. we are we are not faced to the hundred percent, but uh, we hope we all hope that uh, it will uh, it will be back. Uh, in the, in the next months, um, so uh, obviously uh, we we have when we are in hundred percent frequentation, our trains are overcrowded, but they are overcrowded only like in fifteen to thirty minutes in the peak hour in the morning, and same at the afternoon. So the first first uh, work for us is to uh, spread this uh, peak hour and and to to uh, uh, as you adjust with uh, tools as Jasmine uh, showed us uh, to uh, uh, indicate people that they if they they come only 15 minutes before or after the peak hour they will have more comfortable uh, uh, conditions of travel and the, 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 again the, the thing is not to enforce that but to give the, uh, our passengers the, the, the choice, the, the information uh, for them to choose if they want uh, to be in the exact hour, they know that they will be uh, quite squeezed. But if they want more comfort, they know that if they come just 30 minutes uh, after, they will be uh, they will have more more space. So this is a very uh, important. Uh, issue uh, for the, the uh, following months because we don't have the, the capacity to uh, put uh, more trains uh, in the peak hours or at least not in uh, uh, two or three months. So first thing is to uh, work on how we spread the peak hours so that people will find their co the, the comfort they, they are looking for. So, so spreading the peak hours and, and, and sending the message to the uh, passengers is, is important. Uh, and, and I think, uh, Jasmine, you mentioned, you talked about nudge um, and, you know, sending the right message to, to the audience. And Jerome, you talked also about, uh, you know, all the kind of markings on the floor and, and, and on, on the chairs and, and on the train. Um, another question here from Ashish is uh, how important is um, educating the commuters on passengers? So you know, sending the right message, getting the message across to them, um, clearly it's important. Um, but how do you plan to do that? How, how have you been doing that? Maybe um, we start with Jerome, uh, this one. Yeah, the, the, uh, what I said is that uh, if you share the, the, the good objective, people will adapt uh, rightly, but not uh, <laughs> not on every situation. As you as you said, we, we have situations where people, are uh, want to all 
to take the same door in the train, uh, in the queue of the train, uh, if they uh, do, the, if they walk only uh, twenty meters, mm -hmm. they are, they will be uh, more comfortable. So we with that you, you we have, I think, perhaps with uh, indication, uh, physical indication, but also in the first time with people uh, to to uh, our employees present to uh, say them that they have room just 20 meters uh, away uh, that that way in that way we can educate i don't like the educate educate uh, term but yes. um, perhaps uh, show our c customer that they they could uh, react uh, or act uh, differently and and find the, the more comforts in, in the in the trip so maybe incentivize and, and uh, um, encourage them to behave in a different uh, different ways um, but by showing when when it's crowded and, and, and so on um, Jasmine do you have anything to add to that yeah perhaps uh, one thing so during res research we did in the last years um, we found out that educating or influencing passengers' behavior is really complicated mm -hmm. and nearly nothing works. Uh, so um, it's only giving things for free or um, giving comfortable waiting areas. That's the only things uh, that worked for us. So lightning, nothing works. <laughs> mm -hmm. No chance. Also the arrows we, we saw uh, in France no chance here. <laughs> mm. uh, so um, yeah, it's we are doing a lot of research and trying to find out what really works. But we also um, we have the stra same strategy, and we we say they have the choice. They can uh, use the station um, through different times, and if they want to be there when it's crowded, it's their choice. Great. Um, let's let's talk about one more question, um, and then we'll move on to Peter. Um, so the um, next question here is uh, from Christian um, uh, Christian Carstens. Um, uh, it says question uh, question for Carolis, but we can uh, I think both of you can answer. How do you measure passenger flow from entrance to to departures? So I guess from the the, the the moment they arrive at the station until they leave the the, the destination station is. Uh, uh, um, are you doing any sort of end-to-end -end flow, or or, um, or just focusing on specific areas? Uh, no. Um, what we have in, in real time is uh, counting in the barrels and the entrances of the station. So you have the, the real time uh, number of people entering and uh, going out the, the, the stations. On uh, one of our uh, lines, which, which is the uh, fully automated line, we know uh, exactly how many people we have in every train. So we can also uh, follow that and uh, see in uh, where the, the people go out in which uh, station. But individually, we don't know who had entered in mm -hmm. this station and uh, how, which train and where it, it, it went out. We do that uh, for um, with following uh, uh, our uh, cards or uh, people uh, who have a, a regular passenger, but only by knowing where they validate on the morning and in the evening. So we uh, deduce that the, 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 their travel, but we don't follow individuals. For the moment, we, we follow number of passengers entering and uh, uh, going out every station and uh, precisely uh, how many in uh, every train. Great. Um, and, and Jasmine? Yeah, um, well, we are not allowed to do uh, to track persons. So, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so we don't do, of course. Um, what we do is the the counting of uh, number of persons entering and exiting the station, the same as in France. But we have certain areas equipped with sensors where we can track um, persons. We don't know the name; it's um, anonymous, but uh, we can see behavior of persons, which is really accurate um, with um, yeah trajectories and so on. But um, we don't uh, follow um, or we don't collect data about um, the movement through the whole station. So mm -hmm. just in certain areas. 
Right, right. And, and, and obviously, especially in Europe, uh, um, GDPR is very important and it's, uh, uh, it's kind of basic uh, that we need to follow um, uh, to, to uh, uh, you know, protect the privacy of, uh, of the passengers. Um, but, you know, I, I guess uh, um, anonymized or kind of uh, uh, specific area data is, is, is important to, uh, um, to uh, um, uh, passenger flow management. Well, thank you very much both. Um, uh, let's go into Peter um, and then we'll come back to you um, uh, for the panel discussion. Hopefully Christian uh, will be uh, uh, back by then um, available for that. Um, so thank you both for now. And uh, we have now um, Peter um, uh, Knutsen uh, from Viovo, General Manager uh, um, uh, of Viovo. Um, so welcome to the, um, the webinar, Peter, and, and thank you for uh, yeah. hosting uh, uh, this uh, as, as a sponsor. So um, I, uh, I'll hand over to you and uh, Bill, you're sharing your screen so you can uh, um, uh, uh, do that and you can uh, when when you're ready um, come to your presentation yeah let me know if you see my screen yeah it's starting now good. yes I can see your screen yeah good so Thank all you. yours yeah Thank you for, for the opportunity um, and, and uh, thank you also for the, for the two previous presentations. That was very interesting to, to hear how, how things were being done all, already. Um, Viola is a company um, involved largely with airports, but also other segments like uh, train stations uh, and metro stations for, uh, amongst other things, um, passenger related data so flow and and, and crowd management um, we we have a pretty wide uh, footprint um, we uh, work already with some of the biggest airports in the world um, do have a few uh, few rail clients already as well I, I saw a couple of them on here um, so that's nice to see um, but it's something that we are we're trying to learn more about and trying to expand into. Um, we also do traffic um, and we do some tourist attractions as well, where some of the some of the uh, problems or challenges are are, are parallel. Um, so looking at, at crowd and capacity management in in sort of post lockdown, we uh, we I've chosen to sort of some of your challenges that you have um, currently, I've chosen to sort of focus the ones that are mostly uh, mostly sort of relevant to, to the topic, which is safety, managing crowds and, and social distancing, distancing as, as we heard uh, Criolis uh, talk about, and, and, and of course also capacity management, where we, especially already now, we see a lot in, in, in airports that, that uh, capacity has gone way down because of this. Um, the same amount of people requires a much larger footprint. Um, so um, so uh, the capacity is a lot less than what it was before. And we also heard previously that sort of having, having passengers in less time at the station is a goal. And, and of course, that, that will lower the total occupancy. Um, we are focusing focused on providing data on all of this and and also uh, to predict what's going to happen. Um, so, um, in in the stations that we have, we we mount sensors that are, are capable of in an anonymous way to to track passenger behavior. So we don't have any personal data. We don't have any any sort of knowledge about male or female or or, or whatever, but we do, we are able to sort of conduct a track of, uh, of passengers as they progress from the entrance of the station and down to the platform area and even sort of measuring what train they ultimately get on. And of course, we can also then measure uh, transfer flows between, uh, between different trains and, and for arriving passengers, we can of course track 
the uh, the same flow uh, coming the other way. Um, and the importance of being able to basically break down all of this data into almost a per train uh, is because that, that makes everything a lot more trackable. That makes everything a lot more um, viable to, to do a sanity check off. You can, can check if, if data looks correct. It's not just a huge number, but you can break it into, into specific trains. And that also means that when you, when you want to model a change, if you want to change we, we heard previously about the frequency of trains or if you want to change um, which which lines runs um, from which platforms you have a lot a lot more detailed data to feed into to the models because you can break all of your flows down into flows to and from individual trains and actually we are also capable of measuring train occupancy with uh, with sensors on the stations, which is a, it's a lot cheaper than mounting them in the in the trains themselves. Um, so that makes it possible to also provide data about which trains are most busy. So if you are a passenger in a network where there's, there's more than one way to get between A and B, you can you can choose the, uh, the, the route that you prefer. And that is something that we're seeing already that Passengers are not always choosing the, the shortest way between A and B. They are also making decisions based on, on, on occupancy or, or crowdedness. And sometimes they're even sort of using multimodal a lot more where they're, they're, they're avoiding certain parts of the, of the journey um, to avoid the most crowded uh, places. Um, Here's another example from uh, of some data. Um, we've seen these uh, these curves, and if you look sort of at the at the top left corner, that's sort of familiar. Familiar. That's the that's the forecasted uh, station occupancy uh, for a day, and then sort of as the day progresses, you get then the red line with the the actual counts that uh, that is then sort of being filled there, and, and as you see sort of there. On that specific day I chose there, our, our forecast was pretty good, of course. Underneath, you see the, the station bro broken into different areas, and then the darker red colors will, will, uh, will represent more crowded areas, and that sort of makes it possible to then see in our station where, where do we then see the, the biggest problems uh, with uh, density, and, and, and when do they occur. Um, on, on the right hand side, there's a, there's a heat map where the circles, they will grow and shrink in size and they will change color depending on, on passenger density in the different zones. And then, um, you have underneath, you have more or less the same information as in the, in the top left corner here, we've just taken that sort of overall occupancy and broken it into sort of the contribution from all the different zones. Um, following the passengers, of course, also means uh, where, which, which entrance to which platform and also um, transfer flows from platforms to platforms, what's the preferred route um, between, between different places in, in, the, in the station. Um, and that's, that's basically sort of the key and also when you want to simulate what happens if, if we do sort of one-way flows in, in some places, what, what flows are going to be affected, and, and do we get the behavior that we, that we want to. We already know that sort of in, in, in some very busy networks that when there ever there's, there's special sporting events or stuff like that, it's, it's, been, it's been common to sort of then either close an entrance or make an entrance uh, one way um, to to help the uh, uh, sort of get get people distributed throughout the station and get them onto the trains where they need to be, and and here you can basically you get data exactly of what happened what's happening, um, and and you can of course also besides volumes you can then see also the dwell time in the station and where the time is is spent. Um, Real forecasting, um, 
I suspect what we saw earlier, and I must say I, I don't know, but um, what we see a lot is, is sort of aggregated data based on normal, that you look at your historic data, and then you sort of use that to then say, okay, what does a normal Wednesday look like? And in case trains are running after the schedule, that works fine. What we, what we add on top of that is, is an integration to a real-time train system so that we know how the trains are running in real time. We know what headspace they're running with. Um, and we know if there's any planned deviations to, to the normal schedule. And then we will actually build that knowledge into our forecast. Um, so um, as I said, on a normal day with normal operations, it's probably going to look like that they did last Wednesday, unless you have sort of something special going on in the city. But once operations are not normal, once trains are not running at the planned headspaces, your, your crowding and, and the occupancy in your stations is going to be a lot, is, is going to be very different. Um, and integrating to a real-time system that I know most of you already have allows us to simulate this and allows us to sort of give you a warning in advance about what a delayed train, what does that mean in half an hour, uh, 10 stations down the, the line, um, because we can model that based on machine learning, based on, uh, based on, on uh, historic data. So not a lot of uh, configuration and manual work uh, required, but as the system learns more and more from the historic data, it also becomes more and more accurate in predicting what is going to happen based on, on how the service is running right now. And that to us has been sort of the, the biggest uh, change of, uh, of, of how things are done, also in airports, because when you measure something, it's too late to do something about it. Once you measure it, it'll, it's already there. So the future is to be able to, to predict and forecast what's going to happen uh, in sort of foreseeable future with as accurate as possible so that that will give you time to react um, to those predictions. Um, yeah, coming back uh, to, the, to the sensors at the, at the station, and, and here's, a, uh, here's a screenshot from, uh, from New York, where you see sort of the last train out of Union Square Station um, and, and the occupancy of that train. Given we've all already sort of discussed that, that it's very difficult to get passengers to, to change behavior. Um, and it's hard work to get the information for them. You have to be very sort of careful in considering what the, what the best channel is. Maybe it's not always your own application. Sometimes it's integrating and also giving it to, to other uh, communication channels that has a bigger audience. But, but getting the information about crowdedness and how busy you guys are at both stations and trains is sort of the basis of making passengers able to make intelligent and informed decisions. Um, so, so we would, that is certainly what we uh, recommend is, is to sort of get this get all of the information, get it in front of your passengers so that they can make intelligent decisions. Because once they arrive at the station, it's already too late. In, in many cases, there's nowhere else to go. So once they arrive there, it's, it's, it's your problem. So we want to reach them before they sort of leave their job or their home or wherever they want to go to and from so that they can make an intelligent decision about which station to choose and what line to take. And maybe wait 10 minutes for, for a less busy train or, or what the options are. But giving them the information is key. That was it. Uh, that was it from me. Um, thank you for, for listening. And I look forward to uh, yeah, any, any questions or, or discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for your presentation.
um, and uh, I, um, Christian um, uh, can could uh, hear you, I think, um, but could not see you. So it's it's a it's a joy of a uh, um, live event. Uh, uh, um, I'm afraid, and we're, we're all kind of learning to to um, uh, to, to kind of uh, cope with uh, the, this kind of new normal. Um, uh, um, so this is kind of one one example of that. Um, but I, I'm very grateful to Christian for um, bearing with us, um, and uh, he's uh, he's still um, with us, and I think he can he can talk. Um, so Christian, can you can you hear us? Oh. Yes, I can. Ah, perfect. Okay, and and Peter, you could hear Christian. Yes, I can. Great. Okay. So I suggest uh, um, Jasmine and Jerome, if you could come back on uh, uh, on stage, uh, show your um, camera and turn on your mic. Um, uh, I suggest that uh, um, we will. Uh, um, attempt to do a panel discussion uh, uh, this way with Christian um, and and he cannot unfortunately see the question from the audience so I'll I'll come come out, come back on a little bit later on to 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 take some of those questions from the audience but um, Christian will have some uh, 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 questions that uh, um, he has uh, for the presenters um, so so sorry for the technical problem so we share the, the, the work uh, Jules will ask the questions from the audience, and I will ask my own question because because I'm unable to 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 read the questions from the audience. So, uh, first questions uh, to to Yasmin, uh, please. Uh, you you explain that um, eventually the stations will be continued on existing principles. Um, to be frank. Uh, how do you take into account the impact of remote work? Because we could think that remote work will have a huge impact on, on, on trains, on trans public transport. So how do you have, do you think you will have an impact? And do you think you will have to change your principles uh, for dimensioning the station? So what's the impact of remote work, working from home? um uh, on 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 the uh, on transport and uh, will it have an impact on um dimensioning um is that the word um of uh, to, 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 to if, if uh, i give an example um in france uh, jean pierre Tarnou, the ceo of SNCF said will have to change the business model of high speed trains because many passengers within high speed trains use it for business, but uh, they will use more um, uh, coal and they will use less trains and maybe the impact could be huge. And so the, if the impact for uh, for the attempt for, for, for using the trains is huge, the impact for using the stations will be huge. Yeah, so thanks for the question. Um, well, um, there's um, some points. Um, first of all, I think nobody can predict how future will be. But um, if we say that, um, or if it happens that we have more uh, home office, let's say, and, and less commuting um, in the future, well, I think, first of all, that's a good thing for our passengers because they have more space. That's also then a good thing for um, our expenses in uh, dimensioning stations. So perhaps we don't need uh, that many construction work uh, because now we are rebuilding many stations and making them quite big because of passenger frequencies. But the question was, um, shouldn't we then um, yeah, take this uh, into account for our long-term planning? Well, yes, if we know that um, the COVID-19 has impact on our passenger frequencies and we have to expect less passengers than we think we will have from uh, our point of view right now. We should, of course, then uh, take that into account. But right now we don't have really good information about how passenger frequencies will be influenced um, by this crisis. So um, that's why we stick to our rules we already have. and. Um, as I already said in my presentation, there's always um, 
you you can't predict exactly. So um, it's better to have comfortable stations than um, too crowded. So I think it's not a too big problem. And the other thing we see in Switzerland that uh, passenger frequencies are already quite high. I think Switzerland is um, really using um, op public transport uh, quite a lot. There's a, a high share here. So um, yeah, we expect, we still expect high passenger frequencies. Oh, th thank you, uh, Jasmine. It, it is very clear. So maybe you will have um, to change your, your principle, but it's too early uh, for changing them. Uh, uh, Jérôme, uh, uh, two questions. First question, um, I understand that you avoid the attendance of the platforms, but what about descriptions? During the descriptions, during the descriptions, even trains add people to the stations, and you have to manage more people than expected. How have you adapted your procedures, your processing? Yeah, um, th thank you, Christian. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very important. I, I didn't say it, mentioned it in, uh, in my presentation, but when you uh, you think uh, of your, your pro process, your system, and uh, during uh, such a, uh, a situation, you have to uh, 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 to think on normal situations, but you don't. You you have not to forget the disrupted situations because you definitely when when I said uh, our objective was to that uh, people won't wait on the platform, that they had uh, easily uh, the f the first train. Uh, it's uh, obvious that you don't want people to, uh, when there is even only uh, five minutes of delay of the, the disruption, you don't want uh, people to stay on the platform, accumulate and, and form a crowd. So you have to, uh, uh, normally you would uh, let it do, you know, it's uh, only five minutes, you let people come on the platform and perhaps they won't take the next train but uh, the, the one after, I'm, I'm speaking of metro uh, situation. Uh, normally you would do that, but in such COVID situation, you have to uh, change the procedures of your uh, uh, OCC operators so that in the first minute of a disruption, they, uh, the guide, they inform the, the, the passengers so that they don't go to the platform, so that they uh, go out of the station to take another uh, way of transport uh, uh, or, or anything, but they don't enter the station because in five minutes you have a big crowd and definitely you, do, you don't want to have that. So you have to uh, change the reflexes also uh, of your uh, OCC operators and the procedures so that instantly uh, they, they, they will think to stop the flow entering the station to avoid a crowd forming on the platform. That's a, one very important part and it's not uh, easier uh, to, to, to change so, such a, um, which is a, really a, a reflex of, of, of the, the operators. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, Jules, we, we don't hear Christian. I lost him again. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Christian. Yeah, we, I have my mute. <laughs> I was on mute. Can you can you ask uh, ask the question again? Yes. Um, my question. You encourage physical distancing while waiting uh, for the terrain of the platform. How do you manage the transition? Uh, because uh, people have to, to be closer when they, they, they get uh, off and then when they get on the train. How do you manage that? Yeah, <laughs> that's the most uh, difficult part. That's what we saw because uh, 
you, we uh, that's one of uh, the, the things we didn't uh, manage uh, to to uh, su success uh, successfully because we uh, put waiting zones on the platforms to, to to say to people you wait after this line you let people get on the get out of the train you let them uh, go out of the platform and then you enter uh the, the the train we said we we, we informed them that the uh, time of the train waiting in the station was longer uh, than uh usually but you you that's one <laughs> one of the things we we didn't manage people when they see the train they go uh, right to the door and they want to be the first to come in Definitely, this is not. It's a thing we we didn't manage. If if uh, one of uh, has a one of you has a, a DID is the solution, I will take it because it's it's one very uh, difficult uh, thing to 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 do, and that's why we wanted to have high frequency so that people a uh, one uh, the more and more you have uh, people waiting, the more and more they want to be uh, the first one to to enter the the, the train. So. Having a high frequency of, uh, of trains, it relaxes them, uh, and uh, perhaps they will wait a, a bit. But it's very, very difficult to make, to uh, obtain. Uh, thank you. Sure. Sorry. Very, very. very <laughs> I don't uh, have the solution. Uh, answer. Um, and so a very good transition for for Peter. Um, Peter. Uh, I understand that the importance of having data break, broken down per train is very important for you. Can you explain why? And can you explain the, the benefits if you could have more uh, data from, from per train? Yeah, uh, being able to break down the data is, is, sort of, is very important to what we call the feedback loop. In, in the data. So be, in, in order to be able to go back and verify if, if what you predicted was correct, if you just have, if you have a large train station and you have multiple trains uh, leaving and arriving at, at, at the same time, and you've predicted a certain occupancy of your, your station, and then measurements shows that your, your prediction was a little bit off, then if you just have the, the total, it, it becomes very difficult to then troubleshoot why your prediction was off because it, it's just an error to, to something that's accumulated of, of many, many small contributions. But if you have all those individual small contributions and you can also measure those contributions, you can trace back and then say, okay, where did the origin or where did the deviation come from? So, so in order to, to, to to have a better and better quality in your predictions, it's important to be able to trace back uh, the measurements. Uh, th thank you, Peter. Um, so um, another question, um, an amazing, uh, would it be possible to, because you, 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 you stated that it is important to, to, to reach the passenger before his arrival uh, to the stations. Would it be possible, for instance, to say, oh, you should shorten your breakfast because you will have to, uh, to, to accelerate and to go earlier to the station because we will have some problems. Would it be possible with your tools uh, to predict uh, 30 minutes, one hour before the flow, the crowding in, in a station and to give advice to passengers in order to um, yeah, it, it, the number of people it, inside the station. It, it would be possible if, if the sort of disturbance to normal operations was in effect sort of that much earlier. But of course, if, if, if the disturbance hasn't happened yet, we would also not know about it. But as soon as it happens, we would be able to, to forecast the impact to, to the network's normal operation. Then about reaching the, the passenger there, and we've, we've got a long history with also with airports in, 
in them having mobile apps and and to to different success and and it's it's very hard work to get people to download your app and to actually also use it um so there's a whole sort of strategy also on how do i make my the data i have how do i make it available that could be for instance an uh, an integration to google maps if you find out that a lot of your your passengers are using a tool like that maybe you should then make it available also on other platforms than your own platforms because um it, it's all about reaching the the passengers where they are and 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 getting them to download and use an application is is hard work uh it it really is and 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 the challenge if you don't is that often as i said once they arrive at your doorstep it's it's, it's your problem and you miss that uh, opportunity of trying to reach them before they get there. Okay, thank you, Peter. So I understand, uh, and, and Yasmin uh, told me that he's saying it's very difficult to educate passengers, and uh, so it, it's not a technical problem. It's um, we we are to to educate them for using new apps or. Change the habits uh, and things not so so easy. Is it right? Yeah, and 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 there's always for 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 all of us any change is sort of um, associated with inconvenience. We have to change something that we normally do. We had an example from a, a road traffic network where we we placed uh, displays that would tell people that in this sort of very bad morning peak hour, if they could have travelled. 20 minutes earlier, they could save half an hour. If you could travel 15 minutes later, you could save this much minutes. And we didn't get any change at all. And after sort of uh, manual surveys to people, like, hey, why are you not changing? It's because people are not dumb. The people that could drive at another time, they were already doing it. So the people that were sitting there in that queue every day were the people that due to sort of dropping off kids or meeting at work at a fixed time or whatever, they had to be there. So then we resituated all of these displays and we, we put them at crossroads where you could go either left or right to the same, to the same uh, uh, end destination and just show them sort of a red or green arrow and then how many minutes to this destination. And all of a sudden we got a behavioral change of 80% because now we were not asking them to sort of switch their life and get up half an hour earlier, we were just asking them to either turn left or right in a car where they already were. And all of a sudden we got a lot of, of sort of behavioral change because the inconvenience to, to the driver in this case was very little. So, so it's about also being realistic in sort of the change that we're asking people, how big of an inconvenience to them is it? Now, th th thank you, Peter. Um, do, do you have some uh, questions from the audience? Yes. Um, let's go into some of those questions. So I'm just uh, looking at the uh, some questions. Um, I don't know if this this I think uh, some of uh, this may be covered already. Um, but there's a question from Sami. Um, do you monitor the real-time occupation um, uh, occupancy of uh, certain areas in your station? So I think this. Um, um, uh, this may have been covered, um, uh, and, and if so, what measures do you have to reduce uh, reduce the occupancy? So, um, is there anything to add? Maybe um, uh, Jasmine or Jerome, is there anything you want to add to this? Um, no, um, Peter, maybe you haven't sort of. Uh, um, um, uh, if there's anything you want to sort of uh, talk about, uh, you know, um, measures to to uh, to reduce and how the real time occupancy information. You no, know, the only thing that we've sort of seen to to effect is to to whenever we know that that the occupancy will become really high, that, that then some stations they 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 make the, the flows one way rather than bi-directional, so and try to eliminate cross flows from uh, from transfers. Um, that will certainly help uh, with the with the flows. Um, 
but but again that means that you then change and you probably have to then also have the staff for it to to then implement these barriers and and, and stuff like that so so and, and one of the big differences between a train station and, and and an airport is that first of all you're 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 doing with a lot more people in in a lot less space and you also have a lot less staff than what an airport has so so often the uh, the, the limiting factor is to the well yeah we would like to but we don't have the staff um, so 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 often it's about finding the solutions that you can you can quickly and easy implement uh, with the biggest effect because uh, train stations are generally very limited in staff. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter. I, yeah, just me. If I may, um, I think what what's interesting and what is also focus of our research: how can we um, yeah influence passenger flows without personnel without people saying them what to do so um, is it um, signage that can help um, you Peter you you um, explained an example where it worked um, we tried we didn't succeed <laughs> but um, yeah perhaps we could learn from you um, but that's really um, I think we we are focusing our research on because yeah placing people in stations to tell uh, customers what to do is really expensive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't succeed in our first time either, <laughs> but but learn from it. And and I think it's it's really important this about sort of what's what's the inconvenience to to the to the passenger and then trying to find something that's the, the lowest possible footprint. Yeah. So um Another question, uh, I think, uh, for for Peter as well. Um, how do you how do you acquire data regarding crowd? How um, do you use your own camera network, um, or uh, I guess that the, another option is to use the existing um, uh, CCTV network in the stations. Yeah, CCTV is is different because or oh, it's difficult because many of these cameras they can they can swivel and and change focus and so so being able to use that picture to 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 learn from is is difficult because it can change um you can definitely get some data from from uh, existing wi-fi infrastructure if it is in place um but we are we are sensor agnostic uh, we also do have uh people counting cameras stereo cameras that can be mounted overhead that can count people really accurate and and for the flows following uh through the station there there we need a what is called a re-identification technology so that you can you can walk out of range and then come back and we can still recognize that you are the same not the person but the same entity that we are tracking uh, and we're doing that by tracking mobile devices um, of course in accordance with uh, european gdpr rules um jerome or jasmine anything to add to what you're currently doing in terms of uh, hardware um use of hardware, CCTV, or any? Both. <laughs> yeah. So um, we use um, yeah stereo cameras, the same. And um, we are also using the CCTV um, cameras. Um, we, we are just uh, trying a new software. We are just starting with that, yeah. So yeah, we, 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 we had a... Um... We have uh, currently experiments on uh, tracking the, the GPS uh, signals uh, uh, of, of our customers, but this, this is uh, the, the problem of that is uh, uh, is you have just a part of your crowd, so you can you can uh, see the, the the movements and uh, the, the the way where people go, but it it will be only uh, uh, one part of the of the crowd and the you have to 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 have uh, enough people for uh, every movement to be a representative of, of uh, the, the 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 people around them but we we are experimenting that uh, uh, currently thank you so um next question i think uh, is is interesting how, how can um, how can you kind of maintain social distancing in populated stations or, or, of countries like india so this is again um it, you know this we may need to do a bit of a brainstorming here because you know the yeah. um if you you know if you know um how trains are like in in, in you know countries like india 
Um, it's a little bit like uh, that in Japan, where I'm originally from. Um, you know, you can you've seen you know the, the pictures also of uh, you know the, the station station staff pushing uh, passengers into the state, uh, trains and so on. Um, so it's it's the, the it's kind of next level um, uh, you know busyness of of the stations and the trains. And how can maybe maybe it, it sort of doesn't come under your um, you know uh, how the situations are currently, um, but how how do you deal with that uh, in, in in those situations? Um, I don't know, Peter. Maybe you have uh, you have answered to that, and maybe we'll, we'll come to um, the other speakers as well. No, it it, um, it is difficult, and it doesn't matter if it's India or if it's Central London or if it's Paris. It it, it sort of if if you in a normal situation have people packed because that's the space that is available. Um, this is just adding to that uh, that challenge, um, and and again, all 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 you can do is is to try and inform them and try and sort of optimize uh, the space you have available for as efficient flows as possible. Because again, um, and Jerome touched upon this, the, the the dwell time in the station is adding to to the occupancy. So so the quicker you can expedite people through the, the station, it will it will hurt your retail. But 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 then there's, there's there's not a lot that's good for everything. So so um, so so that's the only way to sort of make the flows more efficient. But there'll always be a a, a, a limit, and and we've seen also in in sort of in yeah in in some areas where there's, there's a discussion on sort of are you informing passengers and asking them to keep the distance or are you sort of enforcing it and closing your doors and 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 that i think is is also interesting to see and that's probably going to be different from country to country who who has the responsibility and and and, and what will be enforced um i guess yeah. i guess yeah jasmine sorry go ahead uh, i i think so too so uh, i think if you really have to enforce um um, yeah, um, less people in the stations because of safety reasons, then crowd control is the only possibility. So closing the doors, but um, um, for keeping distance, um, I think it's really a complicated question. Who is responsible for that? Yeah. I have no answer there. Mm. Christian, I don't know if you... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Jerome, go That's ahead. one of the things we, we didn't want to do because we do that on, on special events when, when we have a, a very much of a crowd, uh, special events, we, we close the door, we count uh, people uh, that enter the station by packs of, uh, of hundreds and uh, to, to, to be sure of, of, for safety reasons. But when, you, when we do that, we have uh, like a, uh, uh, 500 meters of, of queue uh, before the, the entrance of the station, and so you have you 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 solve your problem of distancing in the station, but you push it back in the in the street. So it's not a, yeah. really no solution. So we want we 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 uh, cho chose not to uh, shut any entrance, any station, uh, not to create this uh, this phenomenon. Um, when you have too many people, the, the, the fact is how uh, how efficient you will be to evacuate them uh, quickly. It's, it's the only uh, solution we we have uh, if the people are are there. You you, you want uh, uh, you want them to wait uh, before the entrance of the station because it's only uh, uh, switching the problem to uh, a public area, but uh, it's, it's not solving it. Christian, I don't know if you want to add um, your kind of uh, perspective uh, from from your time at Gare de Lyon. Um, you know, one of the busiest stations in France. And um, you know, do you have any any idea on um, uh, kind of uh, any sort of extreme situation when when it gets really crowded? Uh, I think. Uh... Um, can, can you um, can you, uh, you may need to hear. speak a little bit more uh, loudly, uh, Christian? Can, can you hear me? Yes, it's better. It's better. Yes. Uh, 
yes, I, I was head of the, the, the Paris Gare de Lyon station, and uh, it is, it was, it is, it will be crowded. Uh, and uh, when we have this repeated uh, situation, it, it, it's worst. Uh, I, I think that the solutions given in the afternoon are, are the best to me. Um, of course, when, when you 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 can push people outside of the stations in the streets and and, and you, you don't solve completely the the problem, but uh, you, you you do your best and um, understand that uh, you are ready to 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 cruise the the most crowded stations when necessary. So you, 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 you do the best. Uh, it's very difficult, to, very complicated to, to, to do better uh, today, I think. And so probably we will need, and and the new normal will um, benefit, will have benefits from the current situation for, 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 for the future. We'll learn um, managing, better managing uh, the crowds. Um, we will, um, implement new tools, uh, maybe artificial intelligence could help for for, for uh, more accurate, uh, uh, that is very difficult uh, today and, and um, so sorry but I don't see how to do better than what you, 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 you do today. Great. Um, um just moving on to the next uh, question, um, there's a question about uh, what is the most efficient way um, of minimizing passenger retention, retention in station. So I guess uh, making so making sure people don't stay after they, you know, um, uh, leave the trains and, and, and what, you know, is there any way of uh, um, making sure that the, the passengers would leave the station? I guess that's the question. Um, Make the stations less, uh, least comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps rain in the station. I'm sorry, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I think it's it's about uh, services. Um, and if you have uh, many services and uh, shops and so on in the stations, passengers tend to stay there. If you have areas where you can meet with others, they tend to meet there. Um, yeah, I think that's that's one thing. But um, yeah, there's also also a financial aspect there. So mm -hmm. closing all the shops means less revenue. Um, I think that's quite complicated. Um, then still, once again, information. I think it's all about information. Uh, for example, we were investing in um, informing our passengers better on um, connecting um, transportation, so buses and tram and whatever you have in the city. Um, I think that could have an impact, perhaps. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because um, until, you know, February this year, um, or, you know, we wanted to make sure trains as train stations are busy and we wanted to make it as attractive as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been making an effort to, you know, open shops and making making as uh, as, as as a customer passenger friendly as possible. And you know, so just like uh, having to do social distancing, we 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 are, we are kind of having to make make stations as uh, unattractive as possible, which is uh, very difficult uh, things to do. Um, Jerome, do you have anything to add to that? How how do you make sure passengers leave the stations? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say that in uh, in metro station we we have less the the, the problem than in train station because it's not a standard place to to to, to live to to consume or to wait for people. Our our customer are more used to come in and out quite quickly, so we don't have quite this problem. But we have some. Uh, a few uh, 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 shops in in our stations, but they were shut uh, shut down after the the, the lockdown. So it's it, it's it, it's solving part of the problem. But it's it, as Jasmine said, and I, that was one of the question was uh, it's good to to have high train frequency with a low. Uh, uh, 
uh, number of passengers, but uh, this has a cost. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really the, 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 the problem of the, 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 the situation if it, if it lasts. It's uh, how the economy of, of uh, public transport will, will be changed by this situation because you will, if you want to have more comfort, uh, so transport perhaps less people with the same uh, uh, the, the same number of trains or of staff, uh, it, it, it will be a, a durable problem, an economical problem, obviously. One of the um, one of the solution is, is that. Uh, what I said about uh, spreading the peak hours, because you see that already today, you uh, you use your uh, means of transport, your uh, number of trains, for instance, just you, you dimension them uh, just for uh, half an hour or perhaps an hour in the day. So perhaps uh, by uh, uh, achieving this this spread of, of the peak hour, you you, you can uh, uh, reach the, the the two objectives or more comfort, but not uh, more expensive for for the, the economy of public transport. Great, um, uh, Christian. Uh, do, do we, there, there are more audience questions, but I don't know if you want to jump in and ask more questions from your point of view. Uh, sorry, Jules, but uh, I, I lost. Uh, uh, oh, you cannot. Uh, you cannot hear the uh, I can, speakers. I cannot see uh, the, the questions, and I can not hear um, the speakers. Now. Ah, okay. So I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll continue then um, from the audience yes, questions. Okay. Um, so we have a question about. Um, uh, from David uh, about economical sustainability. Um, so obviously, there's there's a balance that we need to strike between uh, um, you know revenue and and safety. Um, how are you kind of uh, um, ensuring? Obviously, within the safe safe limit, um, you'd want to still ensure that the trains are as busy as possible um, to to keep your kind of. Um, uh, economic sustainability going from your obviously the revenue is massively down and, and so on how do you kind of manage that uh, um that kind of balance um but then just mean do you want to go yeah. start perhaps um for svb that's a bit easier than for other companies because we are financed by the government so um uh, we are not paid by passenger numbers <laughs> but by trains so um <laughs> um that's a bit a difference um, only for um, yeah for the revenues we make in the stations so shops uh, that's uh, relevant but but still of course <laughs> we want uh, our trains to be uh, to be used and um, what we do we have um, shorter trains we don't drive less trains because we want the people to spread over the hour as we already discussed but we have shorter trains which is um, yeah. Uh, less expensive, but yeah. But would it make much difference if you have shorter trains? Um, I know maintenance and things may be easier, yeah. but um, you know the, the driver cost is the same, and um, and operationally, does that reduce the cost that much? That's as we experienced the only thing that uh, really works because we had the um, reduction of the timetable, but um, that doesn't save money. Right. <laughs> or then when coming back to the timetable so um yeah that's yeah but it's a different situation here it's really hard to uh, answer mm. yeah. jerome your your uh, private company um uh, well um yeah, partially but paid private by, company paid by sensef i guess but but paid by the the, the public transport authority which is uh, the, the metropolis of, of uh, lyon so it's public uh -huh. um, right. money anyway. It, it, we, in, in fact, we have um, uh, we have uh, 60, 60 percent of uh, the of uh, the the price as, that is paid by uh, the customers, the, the, the passengers, and uh, the, the rest is uh, is is uh, is paid by uh, the uh, public uh, transport authority. 
um, so it's it's a huge problem, uh, <laughs> uh, as 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 I said, because uh, only for this uh, this year uh, we will uh, lose um, like uh, thirty percent of the incomes of mm. the, uh, the public transport authority, and with quite the same service, even if uh, during one. Uh, during a lockdown, uh, the first lockdown, we, uh, we went down to 50% of, of uh, train frequency. The savings are uh, not, so, not so good. And uh, so it's, it, it will be a very difficult year, uh, 2020. But the, 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 for, for me, the, 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 uh, the bigger problem is what will, uh, what will come and uh, will uh, the uh, the whole system of financing of uh, public transport will, will, will be, be changed by uh, this, uh, um, this this new situation. Perhaps uh, people uh, using less uh, public transport. Uh, you, 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 you spoke of uh, uh, remote uh, uh, working, uh, but you, you also have people who will have uh, difficulties to go back to public. Uh, transport so we we are for um, i think for many years in a situation of uh, less people financing at least the same the same service so it, 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 it's a i i don't have the the, the, the clues because it's uh, uh it's on not only uh, for the the company but also it, it, it's a, it's a matter of a public uh, uh Public financing, uh, the, the, the public transport, and, and it's it's um, for us it's very important because we were on on a, on, a, uh, on a way of, of increasing uh, the use of public transport over car using, and uh, the COVID crisis has broken this uh, this good. Uh, this good way, and uh, we will have to work uh, uh, operators, uh, public authorities, to, uh, uh, to to give back uh, the, 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 the situation, to, to go back to the situation, to to uh, get back our passengers out of the car, and again to public transport. It's it's. Uh, uh, it is a general subject of an environmental uh, issue, of an earth, earth issue. Uh, so, uh, um, COVID is not just a problem of economic, but also of a bad habit coming back of mm. use of car that we 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 had uh, changed for uh, with many years of effort. And just in two months, people uh, went back to their car. So uh, mm. let's go back to work. Yes, I know. I know that uh, um, in in Paris, for example, the the um, uh, the, um, the mayor um, uh, Mrs. Hidalgo is 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 doing a big uh, um, drive or uh, drive, you know, um, sort of uh, getting cars out of the city centre and, and also sort of uh, you know um, sustainability based uh, programs and you know. Uh, Prioritizing uh, um, uh, bicycles and, and, and walking in city center, and, uh, so as public transport. Um, so maybe maybe that's that's the kind of way to go. Um, so that uh, you know, you, I think you're absolutely right about uh, um, uh, old bad habit uh, uh, coming back. Um, because you know, these cars. You if you drive your own car, it's, it's you know it's clearly safe. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's the mess sending a message that uh, public transport is also safe um, and getting people's, people to kind of understand um, that um, situation. P Peter, do you have any kind of data um, regarding sort of cars uh, versus kind of public transport uh, usage and, and, and uh, that sort of thing? No, no, un unfortunately not. Um, the only thing that we can add is sort of in the, in the cities where, where we've, we've we also have traffic management there. We can see when we compare the data that at the initial lockdown, when everybody had to work from home, of course, we saw also a massive drop in, in road traffic. But but sort of 
similar to what Shawm is, is, is saying here, we, we saw a lot quicker sort of return of, of normal traffic on, on the roads and, and sometimes even sort of uh, a, a bit more, even though we sort of have people working from home again. So so I agree. And when we're back to sort of that change that people has to do is uh, now I have to change, I have to travel at another. It's, it's easier to just take the car again if it's, if it's just sitting out there in the parking lot. Thing. Right. Yes. Um, so it's, it's a challenge, I think, for all of us. And uh, Jasmine, from your point of view, maybe, you know, there, there will be a competition with, uh, with the airlines. And, and this is, again, um, you know, we, we've covered in one of the earlier webinars that uh, um, there's a prediction that air um, uh, traffic uh, um, will not come back as, as strongly as high speed rail. Um, uh, or long, long distance uh, trains, um, you know, after COVID. So maybe it's something that both kind of uh, rail and uh, public transport sectors uh, will, will need to kind of think about how to kind of attract passengers back um, after COVID uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got a few minutes left. Um, maybe um, the three of you could provide kind of last last words um, uh, in kind of half a minute, um, uh, sort of summarizing the. Uh, the debate and maybe if you have you may have any any sort of last message you want to give to the audience um who wants to go first shall i start just me yeah okay um that's um well summarizing what we what we discussed um i hope not everybody wants to say the same i'm saying because i think it's it's just one big message um it's uh, uncertain how future will be, and um, it's quite complicated to react on what we were experiments, uh, experiencing right now. But I think what we learned today is everybody is giving his best, and we are all um, customer-centered, um, and we are really looking for our customers and try to find solutions. Um, how make the situation the best possible in these circumstances and um, yeah i think that's the message from today great thank you jasmine maybe yeah. jerome yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, as you said uh, in, in introducing this uh, webinar it's, it's very complicated the, in the situation but um I, I think we, we have positive uh, ways of seeing it. We, we have uh, uh, dealt with this situation. We, we, uh, no one has uh, had uh, known before and uh, we continued. Uh, we, uh, the service never stopped. Uh, and uh, our, uh, it's good to say that our staff were working uh, to ensure the uh, continuity of service. So uh, that's one uh, very positive thing of this uh, crisis. And um, also we, uh, after uh, three months after uh, end of lockdown, we had returned to, uh, as I said, 85% uh, of frequentation of our uh, uh, network. It's not so bad. So uh, alas, uh, there, were, there is a second lockdown in, in, in France and second waves uh, uh, quite everywhere, but uh, we, we can be optimistic uh, for the return of uh, people to public transport. The uh, difficulty for us will be to work the 15% that, uh, 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 that, that went not uh, back to uh, public transport and to un uh, understand why they, they didn't come back and to get uh, to get them back to public transport. <laughs> and we've lost uh, Jules. <laughs> we lost Jules as well. <laughs> okay, Peter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll go on. I, I, I think that uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree that this is most likely not a permanent situation. That most of us we we expect things to sort of return to something close to what we used to call normal, at least. Um, I would say sort of having worked with uh, with airports now for, for, for more than 15 years and now optimizing operation use and data. Um, I know a lot of you is already doing that, but, but do get started. And it doesn't sort of now, it doesn't sort of expire just because maybe COVID goes away normal operations can always be be optimized as well and 
right now getting started, it doesn't have to require huge investments. All of you already have technical platforms that already generate lots of data that, that you can start to dive into. And, and, and sometimes the real value uh, comes from starting to combine what the different systems know into sort of a, a new and holistic view about your, your operations. Um, so, so do get started with that. I'm sure all of you can benefit from, from learning more about your operations. Okay. And here we have Jules maybe coming back. <laughs> Lost, lost light. <laughs> yeah. If not, if not, maybe then the three of us should say, uh, yeah, <laughs> say thank you uh, to the audience. And, uh, yeah. We are we are at top of the hour. Um, yeah. Let's see. Maybe he's back now. Jules, are you with us? Hello. Yeah. Uh, I'm Akshata from the IDITS team. I'm sorry that uh, we lost Jules, and I would like to thank everybody for uh, your time and a wonderful webinar. Uh, I would like to quickly talk about our upcoming webinars, which will be which uh, will be quickly uh, showed on the screen. So we have three upcoming webinars: uh, Good Decision Making for Railways in Tough Time uh, on 25th November, uh, in association with Atreno Lab. Uh, after that, we have Cybersecurity for Rail Digital Transformation Project during the pandemic on 2nd of December, and uh, the next one is. Uh, the fourth part of the power of digital to inspire real passenger confidence uh, the topic is smarter ticketing to bring real passengers back safely that's happening on 16th of december uh, we will share the link of the uh, to register for this webinar in the chat panel for the audience member and uh, uh, a quick overview about our upcoming summit which is the 10th international railway summit happening in February from 23rd to 26th. Uh, it's an online event and uh, we will, uh, if you want to have more details about this webinar, please do visit our website and get in, uh, get in touch with, uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I think, have a good evening. If I understood that correctly. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Nice Bye. to meet you. Bye. Bye.